Hey y'all, Darla here with Growing Tropical. Well you guys, in today's video, I thought what I would do is something that would give me instant gratification in my garden. I have been working over here on the south side of this property and I have been kicking a shovel. I have been pulling out spent plants. I have been nursing um, pest ridden stems and leaves. I have just been doing things that are necessary, don't get me wrong, but I don't really have a lot of like um, beauty when I'm done because I have been pruning things really super hard because I've had a lot of bug damage and just kind of, um, you know, relocating some things. And so I thought what I would do is I would just go ahead and kick back in my little garden stool and I would do something in this little basket or this little wheelbarrow that's right here uh, to my side. I love this little wheelbarrow. It's been in my life for, I know, better than 10 years. This wheelbarrow has been followed me from the front yard to the backyard and um, just kind of all over the landscape. And its resting place has been over here for the last several years. And it's just a pretty little thing. It's a whimsical little thing that um, I just, I love to plant up from season to season to season. And who am I kidding? I live here in South Florida. I'm a zone 10. And believe, I mean, really and truly y'all, our seasons are winter and summer. So, um, but what I mean by that is right, like right now, I'm gonna be planting this guy up with um, some plants that I'm probably going to eventually have to take out in the next couple of months because as we start going into our deep spring and early summer, it just gets so, so hot here. And a lot of the things that, you know, we would normally plant right now, which we're the beginning of March, um, you know, it's, I shouldn't say it's like cooler, but our, our nighttime temperatures are still a little bit cooler. You know, they're in the 60s as opposed to, you know, the upper 80s and our humidity has been coming in a little bit more, you know, day by day by day. But my point is the things that, um, you know, as we start going and progressing into our, um, our late spring and our early summer months, a lot of the things that just did really, really well in our winter months just don't do well anymore. And so um, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be planting up things in this basket today that, um, two things, first of all, things that are not going to make it through our, you know, our late spring and early summer. Uh, the other thing is going to be that um, where this basket or this wheelbarrow is actually located, if you see, if you can maybe see that I'm, I'm in the shade right now, and that is only going to be for maybe another month or so, um, not very long, because that sun is still sitting over into the, on the south, or it's still hanging out in the, you know, lower south. And so as it starts going up, you know, straight overhead, it's this side over here is just gonna get a full whopping blazing sun. And I'm gonna get maybe a little reprieve because I do have two Agile Nidias that have gotten um, a little bigger since I put them in actually. And um, they will get a little bit of, of canopy, um, you know, dappling of light, um, you know, maybe for maybe an hour or so, but for the most part, it's gonna get a pretty good full on sun over here. And so, this wheelbarrow is going to end up having to be re replaced with a lot of like heat tolerant, sun tolerant type plants. So anyway, before I talk to you about what I'm going to be putting in here, I want to talk to you about what I'm going to be lining it with. Now, for those of you who follow my channel, you know that I have been into um, the weed barrier liners or the weed barrier fabric. I have been lining my, um, my baskets, my 20 inch baskets. As a matter of fact, this weed barrier liner, I'm just looking at this, it almost looks like something has been eating at that. I just noticed that. That's either, we don't generally get much, by the way, of rabbits around here, but that might be like rats. That's awful. That is absolutely awful. Just notice that. Anyway, <laughs> that's not part of the video. I'm gonna be lining this basket with the weed barrier liner. That's very disappointing to me. Look at that, it ripped a hole right in it. Fortunately, it's big enough that I can cut that damage off. But anyway, you guys, back to back to what we were talking about. I'm gonna be lining this, um, this wheelbarrow with this weed barrier liner. And um, what I'm gonna do that's a little bit different than I have been doing with my hanging baskets, I've been just using the weed barrier um, fabric. 
and it's been working absolutely beautifully. And um, I've been securing it here lately, the last couple of baskets I've done, I've been securing them with um, the zip ties like all around the top, primarily because I noticed that it's helping with um, keeping the liner more in place when it comes to like, for example, when I water, I tend to get a little bit of a puckering as that soil starts getting like really heavy. I get just a little bit of puckering and I'm noticing that when I use those zip ties, I'm not getting that puckering in um, the, big, the big large gaps. Um, of the basket. And so what I'm going to do differently with this basket is once I line it with this weed barrier, I'm not going to right away put it, put zip ties on it. I'm going to see once because it's such a large area and because I am going to be going over top of it with burlap. Now this burlap is a heavy duty gauge burlap. It's a, um, like a garden burlap or a garden fabric, I, I guess is what I should say. And I bought a big, big bunch of it because I'm planning on doing several projects where I'm going to be using this. So I got um, about 40 foot in length and about, um, or my bad, I'm sorry, that's 40 inches in width and 30 foot in length. So I've got quite a bit here. But what I'm going to do is once I get the weed um, fabric or weed barrier fabric down inside here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lay this burlap over the top and um, just kind of line it in over top of that weed barrier. And the reason why I'm choosing to do this, and again, this is just kind of trial and error for me. I'm, I'm kind of learning what works and what doesn't. But because I've got such a big area here, and I'm going to be putting a lot, a lot of plants in here, I figured that I need as much moisture control as I possibly can get, especially because as we're going into our hotter, hotter months, I'm going to need to make sure that I have as much moisture control in here as possible. Now, just to kind of back up a little bit, in my hanging baskets, I haven't been having a problem with moisture control. I do have pretty much all of my baskets around here on drip irrigation, so they're getting watered quite regularly, and um, I haven't had a problem with moisture, but I was thinking, and again, this is just kind of me kind of spitballing in my mind, I'm thinking that because this is so large, I'm gonna be having a lot more plants in here, and this is not going to have any kind of like drip irrigation, at least not right now. And I have it primarily because it's not a stationary fix in the garden. I do move it around depending on whether it needs more shade, more sun, etc., etc. So I was, <clears throat> excuse me, I was just thinking that by putting this um, burlap that I would be able to create maybe a little bit more um, moisture retention or to keep a little bit more moisture retention in this basket. So anyway, not real sure, like I said, trial and error, going to just kind of see one. I love this breeze. This breeze. We're starting to get those beautiful, beautiful golf breezes and I absolutely love it. It is so gorgeous out here right now. But anyway, going back to uh, what I was talking about, I'm gonna be lining this, this basket up and um, what we'll do, you guys, is I'm going to go ahead and instead of talking to you about the plants right now that I'm going to put in here, I'm going to go ahead, get this wheelbarrow all lined up, and then we'll come back and um, I will talk to you about the plants that I chose to put in here and a little bit about them. So let's go ahead and get started with that instant gratification, making this a very colorful, colorful springtime basket. So let's get going.
Okay, instant gratification. This is exactly what the doctor ordered for me. I needed to have something that I could plant up that looks absolutely springtime and gorgeous. And now I can continue kicking the shovel and chopping everything back over here on the side of this yard, but knowing full well that it's all gonna come back looking absolutely gorgeous. You guys, in the beginning of this video, I talked to you about um, maybe possibly having to replace, you know, a number of the plants that I put in here. And I don't think I'm gonna have to. Actually, the only ones that I'm probably gonna end up having to replace as we go into our late spring, early summer months are probably gonna be these beautiful snapdragons. Snapdragons are actually, they're perennial. I think they're tender perennials, um, but we treat them here, you know, I treat them like animals here. So um, they're, they're very short lived for me because once our temperatures start really, really crawling up, they don't do well and they don't, I believe they bloom better in a, um, when in our winter months here. And in, in South Florida, they bloom beautifully here for us um, in the winter months and the early spring. But then after that, um, they, they definitely tend to struggle a little bit more. Now, if you take them out of the, um, the hot direct sun, you put them in a shadier environment, they're not gonna bloom for you, but they more than likely will survive. And you know, if you're into that kind of thing where you're, you, know, you want to winter over or summer over, <laughs> whatever the term would be, if you want to like, you know, take them from season to season, you can, um, um, I believe these will actually do that. But for the most part, um, for me, I treat them like just annuals. I put them in for a beautiful, beautiful pop of spring color and then end up um, replacing them. And then um, moving on, we've got around the front here, we've got the Pentis, um, Florida Pentis. These are just bright red and they're absolutely gorgeous. Now I find here, again, living in South Florida, the um, it says on the tags, full sun. Well, I'm gonna tell you, I have grown Pentis in the full sun and they burn. They do not do well for me. I don't know what your experience is, but for me here, um, if I do not relocate them into an area or like maybe if I have them in a container, relocating them to more of a morning and early afternoon sun and then shielding them from that you know, late afternoon sun, they won't survive for me. And um, I tried um, a couple of years ago putting them in a box actually over here on the south side of the property. And they, this box gets, uh, it's really, really bright over here in the summertime, but it was a shaded box. It didn't get like direct sun, but it got indirect bright light. And I tried putting them in there. And while um, the foliage was really pretty on it, they didn't really bloom very well. So I kind of chalked it up that they do need to have at least, um, you know, a, a, like an early morning and early afternoon sun to really, really put on those blooms and look as beautiful as what Pentis could look. And then of course, um, moving around the corner, we have an asparagus fern here. And I love these things. They will take, um, again, I don't put those usually in the direct sun, but they will take, you know, um, a partial sun for me. And uh, so I've got actually two of the asparagus ferns. I've got four. I've got two in the front and two in the back of the Pentis. Sorry about that. I, I didn't tell you guys how many I had in here. And I've got two, four, two, four, six, eight of the snapdragons in here. And then of course, um, moving around, actually right here in front of me, and then, which are two of them, I've got two crotons. Can't live without my crotons, y'all. No matter whether they get bugs or not, I love my crotons. But um, I've got two crotons in here, and of course, they'll take anything from shade to sun and anything in between. And I just love them. They give such a, um, even my spring containers, I like to give that tropical flair because that's what grows here. You know, the, just that tropical, where we grow pretty much, you know, the tropicals year round. And I just love to give that little bit of a tropical flair in pretty much everything that I do around here. So I couldn't not do it with this basket. And I ended up putting two really, really pretty um, crotons. And these are gorgeous. They have a little red, they have a little yellow, which pair so beautifully with these yellow snapdragons. And um, then let's see, what else do I have? I have this big, beautiful Chrysandra in the center. Now, Chrysandras, they're another one of my favorites. They grow beautifully here in South Florida. As a matter of fact, they start getting large and in charge as we go into our deep spring and early summer months. The more hot, the more humid, the more wet, the better they do. These require a lot of fertilizer, at least in my experience, they do. I fertilize them, you know, uh, well, they get fertilizer like when they're in my landscape. I grow them a lot around my palm trees. So they do get fertilization from a palm tree fertilizer four times a year. And then I supplement in between with like a bloom booster. 
and to give them these big, beautiful orange blooms. If you can see, they're absolutely gorgeous. These, if I'm not mistaken, are, are called the uh, orange marmalade, and they put on these tubular, um, my gosh, the, the, the stem on these guys will, will get, you know, about, I don't know, four or five, you know, inches in length. And it puts on these spectacular orange blooms and the blooms last for a very, very long time. Now I do deadhead these because it does encourage blooming on the Chrysandra and um, they're gorgeous. They're absolutely gorgeous. I love them. And that is the centerpiece in this basket. So y'all, I, um, I think that's just about it as far as what's in this basket. I did cram it full. I probably could have crammed a couple more things, but I thought, let's go ahead and just see how this does right now. I'm, I'm planning on keeping this basket right, you know, here eventually permanently. Um, and what I mean by permanently is going through this, you know, the late spring and early, you know, or, or late spring and summer months. But for the time being, it doesn't really get much sun here really at all. It may get just like a little filtered through this Adonidia palm in the early morning. And this actually requires a lot more sun than what it's going to be getting. So I'm probably going to go ahead and just take it out and stick it somewhere where I know it's going to be getting a good sun uh, or enough sun so it survives. And then eventually I will put it right back here because again, as that sun starts going straight overhead, it's going to come in here and it's going to provide the sun that this basket needs. So I hope that you found this to be um, encouraging for you to get out in the garden or looking forward to getting in the garden, depending on where your zone is at um, or what your climate is. And uh, spring is, is just around the corner. For us, it has sprung. And so I am going out and I am buying all the color that I can buy. And um, I'm trying to finish up this south side of the yard so that way I can show you what, um, what has been done over here. And I'm really looking forward to that and I hope that you guys are too. If you enjoyed this video, please, please give me a thumbs up. And uh, if you haven't uh, subscribed to the channel, definitely go ahead and click that subscribe button. And we will just plan on seeing you guys in the next video. Bye.